everybody, Karen Romy and Ed Bot here for uh, ZDNet talking about last week's uh, Microsoft Build 2020, of course, our developers conference. This was the virtual edition, Ed, as we know, everything we're doing now is virtual. We're having to learn to take everything and put it online, which has uh, certainly been a new experience for us. Uh, you know, in reading your, your uh, article here, really interesting stuff. And of course, you talk a lot about 2011. So we're going backwards a little bit here. Yeah, I had to get in the Wayback Machine for this one uh, because the, you know, the announcement that uh, Microsoft, big announcement that Microsoft made last week was for their new API project reunion. But as soon as I heard about this, I thought back to the very first Microsoft Build conference, which was back in 2011. And that was the one where uh, Microsoft unveiled their first look at Windows 8. They had the, the developer preview of Windows 8. And uh, as part of that, they showed off uh, a group of, of uh, new apps for their new operating system that was designed to compete with Apple's iPad on you know, tablets and touchscreen devices. And you know how they say you only, uh, you only get one chance to make a first impression? Well, their first impression when they released that developer's preview, all those apps were literally how I spent my summer vacation projects that had been written by Microsoft's interns. Um, and, and even though a year later when Microsoft wound up shipping Windows 8, they had real apps in there that had been written by real developers and solved real problems, the, uh, the market kind of looked at these new apps, these new Windows apps, and they thought that, you know, they basically decided these are wimpy and underpowered and dumbed down and generally not worth the effort. And you know, the, the reaction that people had to these new apps was that uh, you know, they'll stick with desktop apps for real work. So for developers, you know, the desktop apps use the, the old Win32 API. It's been around for decades. And Microsoft has renamed it the Windows API, but, but that's the one they used. Now, for the, uh, for the new style apps, Microsoft came up with a new API, and they've evolved it over the years. And the most recent name of it is UWP, the Universal Windows Platform. Um, and so the problem for developers with this separate but unequal two categories of apps is they had to choose between Win32 or UWP. And unfortunately, they chose the old desktop apps because those were the ones that gave them the most power. And those were the ones that customers were still willing to use because customers decided they really didn't want to go to the Microsoft store and get these newfangled dumbed down apps. Okay, so Ed, so Project Reunion, bringing these two APIs together, it sounds like uh, something brand new here, right? Well, I, you know, I think, they would like you to come away with that feeling after seeing the announcements. Uh, but the fact is that Microsoft has been working on reuniting these two APIs for a couple years now. You know, it's very similar to what they did uh, it, with Windows 8 and Windows 10. In Windows 10, they reunited the, uh, the desktop and touchscreen environments in the operating system. For the last couple of years, they've been doing the same thing with the way that uh, developers write apps. So uh, they had a, a tool called the Desktop Bridge, which allowed developers to take their Win32 apps, um, run them through a tool that could turn them into a package that could be distributed through the Microsoft Store. And it had a lot of the security and deployment uh, and stability advantages that you get with these so-called modern apps. That Desktop Bridge, uh, later turned into something called MSIX, which is a new uh, packaging technology, a new kind of installer. And you know, if you want to, uh, if you want to find a good example of how the developer ecosystem has changed here, all you have to do is look at the default browsers back from the you know 2012, 2013 days till now. Back in those days. Uh, with Windows 8, Microsoft actually had two different versions of the same browser, Internet Explorer. One ran on the desktop, the other ran on the tablet, and if you wanted to work on either one, you had to switch between the two. You had to choose. Now, with the brand new Microsoft Edge that came out this year that's based on the open source Chromium engine, that's a single app. 
but it has a lot of the features that are typical of modern apps in there, including things like you know the share panel. So if you go in and, and you choose, uh, you, you go visit a web page and you choose the share option from the menu, you see the same exact little panel of options for emailing or sending via instant message or copying a link or what have you. That's the same tool that's available in a modern app. So they've, they've managed to be, they've been bringing these things together for a couple of years, but what they're doing now is making it formal and, and uh, publishing a new API on GitHub, on GitHub. And so the idea is that developers aren't gonna have to choose anymore. You're not gonna have to say, well, am I gonna write a desktop app or am I gonna write a modern app? You can start in either place and you know, and, and you can wind up in the same general direction. You just start where you're comfortable, but you'll have the full set of tools available to you with this new API. And, and Ed, uh, you know, so, you know, definitely some advantages there and uh, obvious benefits for developers, but what about, uh, say, us, the consumers, uh, project uh, reunion, what does it do for the consumers, for us? Yeah, well, you know, that's the, that's the missing piece of the puzzle here. And that's the, the thing that has me scratching my head when I'm looking at, uh, at this. Because, you know, I, I do anticipate that we'll see some interesting apps come out of this. But I think the market has made it pretty clear that uh, it's, it's not that interested in the Microsoft Store. Um, in fact, even Microsoft has made it clear that... Um, they're not happy with the, the Microsoft Store, the way to, to, to deliver these packaged apps to their customers. Um, you know, my colleague, Mary Jo Foley, has reported that Microsoft is probably going to be getting rid of the Microsoft Store for Business and the Microsoft Store for Education, which were pretty important developments a couple of years ago, but they haven't done anything with them lately. And she's also noted that some of the people that she's talking to at Microsoft ha have said that they're, they're struggling to figure out a way to replace the Microsoft Store with a different way that people can discover and trust and download these apps. Uh, and so, you know, I think we, we have to sort of figure out what the, uh, the best way to get these things to customers is. You know, in, in, on the, the uh, Project Reunion GitHub page, the, uh, the managers of that project have basically punted on it. They've said they're going to allow you to use any kind of installer technology that you want, but ultimately they've got to come up with a solution there. And there are, you know, there are a couple options available to them. They could, you know, do, uh, they, they could just completely re rework the store if they want to. I'm not sure that's a good idea, but it's an option. Um, there's a brand new uh, product that they announced also at Build 2020 called the Windows Package Manager. Now that's a command line tool that uh, allows developers to download software just by typing a few commands. That's not something that you know, we users and small businesses are, are going to want to wrestle with, but you do have the option of turning that into something you know, like a Linux repository with a visual interface where you can go in and, and choose packages where it doesn't have the connotation of store and I have to buy things, where instead it's just a way to, uh, to, find store, uh, to find software. And then finally, there's a new technology that some people are taking advantage of, which allows you to create the same kind of package that goes into the Microsoft Store, um, but host it on a website, you know, on Azure, or on Amazon Web Services. And then when your customers come there and they find that package, they, uh, they double click it and it's streamed over to their computer. And so you get the, the same security, the same reliability, the same software that you would have gotten from the store, but you have a direct connection to the developer that way. Uh, but I'm not sure which of these options they're gonna choose uh, or when we're gonna see it. But uh, this is something that's going to be going on through 2020. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. It certainly will, uh, Ed. Well, we certainly appreciate you uh, breaking it all down for us. I know you've got a, a great deal more there in your article and, of course, on ZDNet. And for much more information uh, about Project Reunion, make sure you check that out on ZDNet. All right, Ed, thanks for being with us. And thank all of you for being uh, with us today and watching.